Today, we're risking it all as we set out to break a thousand horsepower in my BMW M3 one last time. Today, we've invested a ludicrous $150,000 into this build, including a fully built motor, upgraded camshafts, big turbos, carbon fiber drive shaft, and about 65 other mods, all of which are conveniently located down in the description below. Now, the last time we had this car on camera, you may remember we broke two things. First, we broke 850 wheel horsepower, which is awesome. What wasn't awesome was we broke my dyno because we ex exceeded the limit. It was an expensive mistake, but thankfully our friends at Mishimoto have a much bigger dyno and they've given us access. So today we're pulling out all the stops in our final pursuit of a thousand horsepower with gigantic turbos. We're gonna double the fueling. We have axles so we don't break them and we have some while you're there mods as you know we would. All before we say goodbye to this car. Sorry, I had to do the double flip. Now with the lofty goal of a thousand horsepower, we needed an even bigger turbo to get us there, but we'll talk about that in just a second. These are the Musclemans that we just took off the car. We've had them since about 2,000 miles ago, I guess, when we last built the motor. And as you can see, when you compare them to a stock turbo, they are quite a bit larger, and these got us 850 wheel horsepower. And in my opinion, price and performance-wise, the best bang for the buck that you can get. Musclemen is out of the Netherlands, and they use a brand new BMW turbo, and then they gut it and put all their internals on and make it push serious power. Now, the reason that I say that they are the best bang for the buck is typically with these cars, once you go above 750, your reliability goes completely out the window unless you have a built motor. For most people on earth, way more than enough than you are ever going to need. But for those of you like me that are chasing four digits and a thousand horsepower, you are going to need to bump up to either a single turbo or something like these Kratos turbos with titanium compressors. Now, probably the easiest way to get to a thousand horsepower on an F80 M3 is to get a big single turbo, which a ton of people do. They perform good, they sound good, but they are pretty much all catless to my knowledge. I want to be able to run a fully catted car. This car has four catalytic converters and all four are going to stay on. We proved that you could do 850 to the wheels and we are going to prove, well, we're gonna to try to prove at least that we can get a thousand horsepower. Now these turbos are capable over a thousand horsepower. Are the cats going to limit me? Probably, but I don't have to worry about going catless, having the EPA show up and saying, hey, are you the guy from YouTube? So. Just trying to stay out of jail while making good power. Now, one thing that we do before we install any turbo is we use Liquid Molly's turbo additive. And what this does is you take it, you cut the top off like this, and then you squirt it in. And as you can see, it's a little bit on the thick side. And what this is going to do is this is going to stick to the inside here. So when you start it up for the first time, it's not going to starve it of oil, and destroy your brand new, very expensive turbo. So whatever turbo you're installing on any car, we highly recommend this stuff. We use it on all of our cars. So now that this one lubed up, let's throw it on the car. I won't be needing this anymore because the turbos are fully installed, but what I will be needing are upgraded axles from the drive shaft shop that are going to be able to handle over a thousand horsepower to the wheels. If I tried to run these power numbers on the stock axles, they'd snap like a twig. Stock axle. Drive shaft shop versus a thousand horsepower. <laughs> I almost hit myself with a face. Here we can see the stock twigs, I mean axles, that would not be able to handle the power. So we need to upgrade these. But as you can see, we can't just pull them out. We're gonna have to take apart the suspension. So while we're there, we might as well upgrade. 
These are my fresh set of Moton coilovers. I've had these actually for about a year now and I can't wait to install them. Not only are they coilovers, these are two ways as you can tell by the external canister. It gives you maximum adjustability all the way down to adjustable camber plates up top to make sure that you can dial in your ride whether you're going for the track or the ultimate street setup. But just as we described earlier with the turbos, not every mod is for everybody, which is why we try to cover a variety of products. This is a very high-end system and it's completely adjustable, but maybe that's not really what you're going after. Maybe you are looking for something that's plug and play with your EDC, doesn't throw any code, makes your car handle like an M2. We actually just had Bill's G87 M2 in the other day and I got to drive it around quite a bit and that car handles on rails completely different than even my G80. But if you're looking to have your M3 handle like an M2, Evolve from the UK recently partnered with Bilstein to develop a custom set of shocks and struts for the F80 and also the F82. And they did all of the hard work for you. So all you need to do is select a set of springs. We recently installed this setup on our friend Andrew's F80 M3 and it completely changed the driving dynamics of the car for the better. Plugged right in, no lights, and it was amazing. All right, I've talked way too much and I didn't even tell you about the KG splitters or anything yet that we have on the car. But before we get to all of that, I have all of this to install. We have the Moton two-way coilover, the drive shaft shaft axles. That's really hard to say really fast. We have new charge pipes because I accidentally dropped one of mine. I have liquid molly oil, which we run in all the cars, BMW coolant. Let's get all of this together and then we'll head over to Mishimoto to use their dyno. Now that we have the hardware installed, it is time to start tuning this car for a thousand wheel horsepower. So to help us out, we're going to be tuning with boot mode, but HCP is going to be remoting in all the way from Denmark to see if we can get this car there. Now you may notice from the scenes behind me that we are not at our shop. We are at Mishimoto down here in Delaware. They've graciously allowed us to use their dyno jet as we prove what their cooling system can do. First things first, we need to start out with a base tune before we send this thing to the moon because if your base isn't nice and smooth and safe, well, your thousand horsepower map is gonna end up in a thousand pieces so we're trying to avoid that for today so let's start out with our base tune and then we'll start to crank up the boost in here i told halim i said look i want it powerful i want it safe and i want it drivable so we're going to have the torque a little bit low on the beginning but it's still going to put down some stupid power and i can't wait speaking of stupid fast cars july 9th 2023 we ran it out at co raceway for our annual car show we have vendors like daler coming in from germany we have awe we have youtubers we have food trucks and heck yes we will have racing this year so bring your car and race some of the fastest cars in the nation. For more information and to get your tickets, see the link down in the description. With that, let's get started. Well, if you've been around cars for any length of time, you will know that car projects really just never go to plan. And there are always these small deviations, especially when you, I don't know, triple the horsepower that the car came with. So basically what happened was we put the car in the dyno and run one went pretty good. We had low 700 horsepowers, which was pretty good. And we got it up and it was nice and smooth. And then it started to break apart at the top. So we did another run just to double check and same thing. It was nice and smooth. It was like 720 horsepower or so. And then it started to break up at the top. So we thought, you know what, as a precaution, let's swap out our brand new spark plugs that we just put in. And then we'll also get some coil packs. The only problem was we were in Delaware, the shop is in New Jersey. And of course we didn't bring any spare parts. So my dad actually drove from New Jersey about an hour and a half with the parts that we needed. And we threw them on the car. From there, we continued to refine the tune and do several runs to make sure that everything was nice and smooth. Now we had been for the whole morning doing everything in fifth gear. And we decided, you know what, let's do it in sixth gear. It'll give us a little bit longer duration. So that our tuner can have better insight on what's going on. The problem, which is shouldn't really be a problem, is with six gear in my car, we were taking the car up to 190 miles an hour. And the uh, the CV boot apparently didn't like that. Oh, hello, gigantic hole in my brand new axle joint. I guess because of how fast we were getting up to 190 miles an hour, there must have been some kind of weak point in the CV boot because there was nothing to pierce it. And all of the grease inside found that little weak point, blew a hole in it and sprayed it all over my car and the dyno. Grease, grease, grease.
which of course was right after we laid down 749 horsepower and that clean pass we were looking for all day long. So then the guys at Mishimoto graciously allowed me to use one of their lifts for the next two days as I took apart my axle, the knuckle, everything, all to replace a $30 boot. Now prior to busting the CV boot, we put down that clean pass. Salim was able to start to turn up the boost a little bit. We put the car on the dyno and we put down a whopping 870 wheel horsepower. And then we found a new issue. <laughs> Our dyno graph was a little bit wacky with these different spikes and boosts and whatnot. And when I talked to Halim, he said what was probably happening was the wheels were spinning on the dyno. Now when you have wheel spin, there's only really two things you can do. A, you can make sure your straps are tight, which we checked and ours were super tight. The second thing you can do is you can add weight. So thankfully, Mishimoto has this abrasive material that comes in 55 pound bags for their water jet cutter. So we loaded up the trunk with over 300 pounds of this abrasive material and that did the trick. So with the new weight in the trunk and a new revision, we put down a whopping 982 horsepower through the wheels on my car with four catalytic converters. As far as I know, that's a world record as it stands because nobody tries this without catless downpipes. So I said, Halim, we are so close. Can you give me one more revision? And he said, I left the office and I'm headed home for the day. And I was like, no. <laughs> now the thing is, he's on the other side of the world. I think eight hours ahead of us. So he was doing us a huge solid staying extra late, but he had to get home to his family, which I completely understand. But as soon as he got home, I got a chime on my phone saying the new map is ready. And then this happened. We got a thousand and one horsepower. We beat it by one. Four catalytic converters. We still have the stock secondaries. We didn't even delete them. And we still broke four digits, which was completely mind blowing. This was crazy excited for us because as many of you know from following the videos, we've had this car for five years or so. And we set out to break a thousand horsepower two or three years ago. But with COVID and all the supply chain issues, our projects got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. But we were finally able to hit it. So huge thanks to Halim for staying up for countless hours helping us tune this thing. Pro Tuning Freaks for the tuning software. Kratos for supporting us on our many days at the dyno. And of course, Mishimoto. These guys are awesome. They dedicated their time, their engineers, their dyno, their lift. They gave me loaner tools, everything we needed to help support us in this challenge to break a thousand horsepower on our F80 M3. If you are curious to see all of the different components, there are a ton to this build. We have everything linked for you down in the description below. You know, Zach, what are we gonna do when this is gone? We should do this again sometime. Cause we're not done yet. Should we tell him about this one? <laughs>